Hello, my name is Ray Burkholder. I recently had a hard drive failure on my desktop computer. When I was upgrading Windows XP on my desktop computer, during a reboot cycle, the computer would not reboot again. It was probably due to the Bermuda humidity that we have here. In any case, I tried several cycles of the power and in, in none of the cases would the motherboard read the data that was off of the hard drives and boot into Windows XP. Sometime during this process, the hard drives got corrupted. So I'm using this video as an opportunity to explain the methods that I used to recover information off of the hard drives. There are various tricks and techniques that I've encountered during this process that may be of value to you. So what I've done now is I've taken the RAID controller and the external driver away out of my desktop computer and I am now going to use a 1U server to plug everything into and check into the status of the various components. Because the 1U server does not have a power supply that's strong enough or power enough or, the, or has the connectors to power an external driver away, I'm going to use a computer power supply that I've taken from another computer and I'm going to use a special technique with that power supply to turn it on and connect it onto the external drive array. In attempting to get it to restart, something happened to the hard drives. Probably trying too many restarts corrupted the hard drives. So I've taken the hard drives out of my desktop and I have this 1U Dell server to try things out on. So because this Dell 1U server is not identical to the desktop that I had, there's various things I need to do to try and get this hard drive to work. So this Adaptec card controls up to four SATA drives. So when I bought the Adaptec card, it came in as a kit. As part of the kit, it came with a four drive enclosure. As you can see, the four drives are hot swappable. So I can pull a drive out. And plug it back in. And on the reverse, there are four SATA ports and two power ports. I've taken these items out of my desktop and I'm going to mount them in this 1U server to see if I can bring everything back online and recover the data off of my hard drive. So I'm going to plug the RAID adapter into the server. I have the hard drives. Now on this computer, it does not have the connectors or the uh, power availability to drive the drives in the external drive array. So I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to take a power supply I've taken out of another 1U computer and I'm going to use this to drive the external drive array. So you can see the connector that would normally go into the, the motherboard and the connectors that will drive the uh, hard drives. Now because I don't have an on-off switch. I'm going to use another little trick that you can find on the web where if you take a jumper, you can jumper from pins three and four together, the green wire, to an adjacent ground wire. That will turn the power supply on. Just make sure you don't jumper any of the other wires, any of the positive or negative voltage wires to anything else or you'll short the power supply. So the power supply is currently not connected and has turned off. So we'll connect in the power supply adapters. So in summary, we have a 1U server. We've installed the Adaptec RAID controller card. We've connected the four drives from the Adaptec RAID controller card to the external driver array. We have power to the external driver array. We have power to the server. And we have power to the monitor. And if we turn on the power bar, everything should come on and we should uh, see the boot screen. So with the driver arrays plugged into the computer through the RAID controller, I'm going to wait for the computer to boot. I'm going to then press Control A to get into the RAID controller configuration, wait for it to initialize. There are no messages that come up during the RAID controller boot, so the RAID controller seems fine. So let's go into the RAID configuration utility and we'll see what we've got for the drive. We have a RAID 10 RAID array with 745 gig shows us as two array members, each of 372 gig 
and it shows that the array status has failed. The key thing here to look is that we have a stripe size of 256 kilobytes. That will come in handy for the, one of the subsequent steps we need to take a look at. I have two array members, each one running RAID 1. So there are two drives in each of the two array members, and with the two drives, they are in a redundant configuration. And then the two redundant configurations are brought together as a stripe. So this combination provides redundancy and it provides speed of access to the data on the drives. There should be enough redundancy on the drives that we should be able to recover the data off of the arrays. I will not be able to see the drives within Windows XP. There are two RAIDs. First one has two drives in it. I'm trying to build and verify, but through experience I found that it is unsuccessful. The second one has two drives in it as well, but it's failed completely. So with the two sets of failures, it's unable to go on either RAID set to read the data. So with the two failures, I'm going to have to resort to extreme measures to obtain the data off the drives. So now, I have to take the drives and use a different utility to be able to recover the information off of the drives. As a controller card is manufactured by Adaptec, I call them to inquire about my options for data recovery. Because they determined my controller card was outside of warranty, there was little that they could do for support. Although they were unable to offer up any support directly, they did hint that a company called Runtime Software would be able to have some software tools that might aid in recovery. I downloaded their evaluation tool called RAID Reconstructor. This tool is used to examine the hard drives for locating various file systems. This tool scans hard drives directly, so I needed to bypass the Adaptec controller card and connect the drives directly to the SATA ports on the motherboard. Since the one Dell server only had two SATA connections, I had to use a different computer. The computer I ultimately used had SATA connections as well as SAS drive connections. As the two types of drives use the same type of connector, I had to examine the motherboard documentation to determine which connections to use. With the computer off, I connected the drives in the driver array directly to the motherboard and started the computer. The computer recognized the drives, but placed some of the drives in a boot order with higher precedence over my regular drive. I had to go into the BIOS and update the boot order so that the computer would boot normally. I had to boot into Windows Safe mode in order to use the software utilities manufactured by Runtime Software. I started off by using RAID Reconstructor. Starting it requires right-clicking on the icon and running it as administrator. As I have four drives, I put four into the box labeled as number of drives. Then for each of the four drives, I manually selected each of my 373 gig drives. Recall that during the examination of the Adaptec controller card settings, I mentioned that we needed a 256K block size. This is entered here. The analyze process is started. It scans the drives. Additional parameters are then requested. I am not sure what to put for the entry known as start sectors to probe. Perhaps I should have changed it to sector zero. In any case, I moved on and added a block size of 512 sectors for 256 KB and unchecked the default entries. For the purposes of this example, I also changed the number of sectors to probe to 1000. The results of the scan were inconclusive. I even paid for Runtime's evaluation service. Their results were inconclusive and they even suggested that my drives were beyond recovery. I moved on to examining the drives myself with Runtime Software's other tools. The first one I tried was Captain Nemo Pro. It requires a configuration file called an image file. The image file determines which drives to examine, provides a block size, and how the drives are striped. Since my drives are mirrored and striped, I experimented with various combinations of two drives to come up with something which worked. This is the resulting image file which enabled successful recovery of data from my drive array. The drive numbers are the numbers encountered during use of RAID Reconstructor. I experiment with the ordering of the drive numbers to arrive at this combination. I started Captain Nemo by running it as administrator. I loaded my image file, which in this case is RAID3.vim. Once the image file is loaded, the software recognizes the directories on the drives. The software allows me to browse the directory hierarchy and to examine individual files. The registered version will allow file retrieval onto alternate media. 
because I wanted to examine the directory structure in greater detail in order to determine where I might have corruption. I licensed Runtime Software's Get Back Data software. It also needs to be run as administrator. Upon startup, it finds the drives, but notes some errors, which I acknowledge. I provided with the virtual image file I constructed earlier. I acknowledged the checksum errors and moved on to the next screen. The software was able to find and recognize my various Windows XP NTFS file partitions. I then selected a particular partition and can have it validate the file system. I can browse the files and directories. Once I found a specific file or directory, I can copy it over to my separate media for safekeeping. I have to keep in mind that I need to copy the file directories to drives other than the ones I am examining. In the end, all was not lost. By using off-the-shelf software and through some experimentation, I was able to recover all the data that I needed off of my drives. By using these tools, I was able to save thousands of dollars by not having to send these drives off to a third-party service for examination and data recovery. In hindsight, another good tool that I could have been using in the past was something called GoodSync. It is a valuable tool for syncing working drives with backups and with other computers. I hope you are able to find the information in this video of value.